Hey everyone, Matt Pisarsik from RazorEmporium.com coming at you today for the top 10 things you must know before your first wet shaving experience. So guys, I get emails, I get phone calls, I get texts, and I always get the same question. And I wanted to make a video for you guys. What do I need to know? Before I get started with this whole hobby, I'm thinking about wet shaving, I've been reading about it, I saw my friends are doing it, it's the cool new thing. It's just, it's just so much so, Matt, it's so much. I, I'm watching videos, I'm reading forums, I'm on chat rooms, I'm in Facebook groups, and there's so many conflicting things and products, and I just I can't make sense of it. What do I really have to know? With 18 years experience as a wet shaver under my belt, and kind of a little bit more of a purview of being a retailer and manufacturer and collector of vintage razors, I think I know a couple things <laughs> about this hobby. Um, and I want to share with you what I think are my top 10 lists. So in no certain order, here we go. Number 10, don't buy a forever razor as your first razor. I hear this from all the guys. They are researching. They are, you know, wanting to take advantage of a, of a coupon. They want to buy once, cry once. They, they like nice things. They can afford a premium product. And they're looking at something expensive. And that's cool. And we totally want your business. But I would say, time out. Buy something more reasonable for your first product. Because if there's anything you don't like about some high-end razor, and I'm, yes, I'm holding my own brand here, Rex, if you don't like something from your first shave or two, it may now be like all this weight on your shoulders, like, oh my gosh, I spent $300 on a razor and it wasn't perfect. It must be this stupid hobby. I'm going back to cartridges. I'm returning this razor. I'm done. So. Before you do that, maybe look at something more affordable. Don't let that price tag influence your decision. You'll get there eventually, and if you end up liking wet shaving, you will not own one razor. You will own more than one, I guarantee it. So get started with something that's modest and reasonable and well-known, and you can always get those nice things later. Number nine, get started with a shave cream. Yes, I said it. Get a cream, I grabbed one of my favorites, the shaving uh, cream from Holy Black, but there's lots of other ones. Parasso makes a good cream. You know, there's a lot on the market. Taylor Bond Street has lots of good creams. I say get started with a cream because one of the biggest hurdles that a lot of new wet shavers have is making a lather. And they're getting, they get the shave brush and they get this, this hard puck of soap and they're looking at it and they look at the brush and look at their face and they don't know how to make sense of it. At least with a shaving cream, it kind of has a little bit of a familiar format. It's softer. You can scoop it out. You can kind of put it on your face, even if you need to, with your fingers. And then you can go ahead and make a lather with a brush. And that way you're kind of getting the training wheels on. You can still end up using this product all the time. You may never want to go down the path of hard soaps. But at least it's a little easier for building a lather to get started for your first butt shaving experience. Number eight have first aid on hand. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I think I hear from, from people who see these, who hear about it, who know I'm, you know, I'm talking at a, at a party or something, I'm into wet shaving. Aren't you gonna cut yourself? Don't you worry about cutting yourself? What if you cut yourself? Well, get some tools. Uh, all them sticks are good for kind of reducing inflammation or irritation. They're good as an aftershave and alternative. You can rub this on. If you do have a cut, you may want a styptic pencil. This is more like a concentrated all in block. And it's really something that's meant to be um, more of sealing a cut, closing up a cut. It'll stop the bleeding and it'll also make sure you're not going to get an infection. So have some first aid. Not that you're going to cut yourself. But at least you have the tool that if you, you know, you're not scared. Oh, I can't use it. What if, what if, what if? You got the tools covered. Get started with your shave in confidence. Number seven, stick to your dominant hand. Especially with straight razors, but I guess it applies to safety razors. You know, there's a lot of things you're seeing where guys are doing this. And then all of a sudden, oh, I'm just coming over here with my left hand. Oh, I can do this and I can do this. Stick with your dominant hand. If you're right-handed, use your right hand. Left hand, use your left hand. Just because you don't want another hurdle. Um, the straight razors is especially, you see guys, they've got the straight razor and they're over here, and then all of a sudden, they can switch hands and they're over here now. So I would say stick with your dominant hand at first and don't try to you know master everything with your first shave. Go for par, uh, just try to jump in and get wet with the experience and not try to make the mechanics foul you up. 
Number six, no going against the grain. I know it sounds counterintuitive. I want to get the closest shave possible, Matt. I have to have a glass finish. Listen, nothing. It's a glass. It's perfectly smooth. People walk up to me with like credit cards and they test like, oh, you got stubble. You failed. You failed your wet shave. No, guys, <laughs> there's no drill sergeant who's going to pass inspection in your bathroom. You know, no one's taking a cotton ball to see if it gets stuck on your, on your whiskers. You need to go for par. You need to go for a good, comfortable shave that you don't get irritation and ingrown hairs from and, and have a problem with before you go down the path of trying to chase that BBS, that baby butt smooth shave, right? So go for par, get a good, close, comfortable shave. You can always get closer with more passes as you gain confidence. But for your first shave, get started with with the grain only. Which brings me to my next point, number five, know your grain map. I know it sounds so simple, but I, I talk to guys who have never taken the opportunity to grow their hair out for even more than like three or four days. Like take a long weekend, take a holiday, take a winter break, a summer break, whatever, vacation. Grow the hair out on your face because you'd be surprised. You think, well, I must follow the same thing that every other man has. And I saw a picture once and this hair goes this way and this hair goes this way. Stop. Stop kidding yourself. You don't know what direction your hair goes until you grow it out and take a look. And if you want to, we even have a grain map illustration at the bottom of a, on, a, on our website on a little hyperlink. It says grain map. You can download a picture of a guy's face doing this. And then you can fill in the like little arrows like, oh, this one goes this way. This one goes this. Like even me, like my chin starts going sideways here. My neck goes up here, but then down here. It's wild. By my Adam's apple goes sideways. Until you know, you don't know. Know your grain map. Number four, take your blade out. Take the blade out. I know it sounds so uh, normal for people that are, you know, deep into the hobby of wet shaving. But if you are new and you get a fancy safety razor, I don't care what finish it is. I don't care if it's nickel, brass, rhodium, gold, stainless steel, zinc alloy, aluminum, None of these materials enjoys having a piece of stainless steel sitting in top, on top of it and next to it uh, that's usually moist or wet. And I know what you're saying, but Matt, Matt, I saw on the packaging right here, it says that these blades are stainless steel. They're stainless steel, Matt. Stainless is not stain proof. It is stain less, stain less. But that's also saying they're chocolate chip cookies. How many ways can you make chocolate chip co cookies? You can change the ingredients, right? Well, same with these. You can have the same elements, the same ingredients for stainless, but different proportions and have a different outcome. And some stainless blends are more rust resistant than others. I'm here to tell you these cheap double-edged blades are the worst kind and are the least rust resistant out there, meaning they will promote rust. So you have this fancy razor and you take this cheap stainless steel blade and you put it in it and you're done shaving and you leave it on the counter and then you go back to it next time and you open up and you say there's rust i spent 300 dollars on this razor there's rust why it's your razor i'm returning it i say no no calm down it's the blade you take the double edged blade out no why did i take the double edged blade out at minimum Crack the doors, loosen the cap, get some air in there so it can try to breathe and not be clamped down in constant contact with the, you know, the entire surface of the metal. But really, remove this, dry this with a towel when you're done, and set it on your stand or on your bathroom counter to air dry. You know, maybe leave it cracked open or leave the parts loosely assembled and don't be fully clamped down with each other. Let some air breathe through there and promote some drying because I, I hear it doesn't matter what brand it is. People buy high-end razors and they get rust marks and they think the razor is a problem. It's the culprit is the blade. Take the blade out. Um, these guys are, are just, they're really cheap, thin stainless steel and they will promote rusting and that rust can travel. I've seen that, that rust travel from here and then it goes down inside the handle. Now I got rust down here because it, it dripped down with water and now that water and the shaving cream are carrying the rust places like a little vehicle for rust transportation. Take the blade out to avoid all of this. Take the blade out. Number three, store your brush upside down. 
they make these stands for a reason. They're not just to look cool on your counter. I know they look pretty cool. Like, you know, a new girl comes over, you're like, hey, I'm a wet shaver. Look at my bathroom counter. But seriously, you may ask yourself, how do all these little badger hairs or synthetic hairs all stay in here? They stay in because you take all these hairs, you tie a little string around it, you dip it in epoxy, and then that goes inside of this handle and gets glued in. Well, that epoxy is all that's holding all this hair together. They take the string off. So there's nothing from stopping these hairs from falling out. When you shave, water will naturally go down and kind of wick down into the knot, like, like anything else. When you hang it upside down and let it air dry, you're trying to have gravity come into effect and, and pull the water out and really promote drying out so you don't get that epoxy little knot soggy and soft and then and that promotes hair falling out so if you're going to have a nice brush take care of it by hanging the brush upside down when you're done using it simple but effective number two no chasing bbs but i, I hear it from customers all the time that they are enjoying wet shaving but i'm just you know i'm just still getting ingrown hairs or i'm still having irritation problems and i always go back and say well you know tell me about your shave well i'm doing five passes and then look at me straight in the eyes. Oh, I got to go down twice, and then I go across twice, and I go up once. And I'm like, that could be the source of irritation. But I got to get a BBS shave. I have to get the BBS shave. I've been reading about the BBS shave. Stop. Try to go for par. Try to get a good, close, comfortable shave without causing irritation. Stop chasing BBS. For your first shave, just go for par, guys. Get a good shave without trying to get the best. The best will come in time. And if you use cold water, you'll be surprised how much that helps get a BBS without even having to do multiple passes. And number one, not all shave creams or blades or anything else in this hobby, razors are the same. Experiment and have fun. I swear, I hear from guys all the time, well, yeah, I gave the wet shaving thing a try, you know, yeah, it just wasn't for me. I, I, I always dive deeper. I never take that for an answer. I say, well, what did you use? I, I don't know. I got this razor from the grocery store and it just, it just really wasn't that great. Well, how about your blades? I, I don't know. Whatever it came with. Did you try anything else? No, no, it's not for me. It's just, uh, you know, I get a better shave with the cartridge. And I'll be like, well, you, did, you know, there's lots, of, there's probably 70 different brands of blades. And there's probably, you know, 100, 200 different razors out there. And how many different shaving creams, a thousand different shaving creams. You got to have some fun. You got to have some experimentation. You got to find the products that work best for you. And there's no way to do it without trying. We can't predict what blade's going to be best for your skin. We can't predict what cream's going to be best. Only you can figure that out through some experimentation. It's kind of like an allergy test where they put all these little things on your skin and like, oh, you're allergic to nuts. It's like that, you gotta experiment. The dermatologist can't just predict and guess like, oh, you must be allergic to this. They do it, they experiment on your skin to see what you react to. Same thing, experiment. Put these things on your skin, put them on your beard, try using them and see what works. That's half the fun of doing this and that's half the reason to switch is because there's so many cool products out there. Find what works best for you and get the best shave of your life. It's possible, you just have to work at it. Well guys, that is all I've got for my top 10 things you need to know before your first wet shave. And truth be told, this video was an impetus because I had a phone call from a customer who told me that he was spending all this time researching, he watched a million different videos and he couldn't find everything in one place. So we put together the 10 we think are essentials. But if you have a number 11, number 12, number 13, tell me below in the comments. And if you do leave a comment, you are entered into win this, the official Razor Emporium black and blue t-shirt. We are so happy to be part of this community to help you guys out there shave better. We care about you and the quality of shaves you're getting. Subscribe to our channel if you're not already subscribed. Like this video if you liked it. Share it with somebody who needs to see it. And we will see you next time at Razor Emporium for all things vintage shaving. Thanks guys.